The Logitech G923 is to sim racing equipment what a pop-up tent is to camping. It'll give you a nice easy introduction with little complexity and it won't cost an arm and a leg doing it, but if it turns out that you really like camping, you're going to want a bare tent. And so the G923 is perfect for casual racing on PC and consoles, but for the much greater demands of sim racing, it only just about makes a cut at the entry level. While it's a bit outdated, I mean it's certainly got its flaws, the innards of this thing haven't changed much in like 15 years, this is still where it all began for myself and many 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 other fanatical sim racers today. This is where we found our passion and it can be the same for the hordes of incoming sim racers that are still to discover that. Some of you will start here, some of you will skip this and go straight to the mid tier and hopefully that's something that this video will help you find out. Let's take a look. This video is sponsored by AXC Sim, best known for the True Break mod for the Logitech G25, G27, G29, G920 and G93. The True Break mod transforms the Logitech brake pedal giving you much greater accuracy and precision, perfect for serious simulations where braking performance matters. Like all AXC Sim products, True Break is fully compatible with Xbox, PlayStation and of course PC. I personally vouch for the True Break mod, it works amazingly well to take your Logitech pedals to the next level. AXC Sim also sell new cables and potentiometers to help keep your pedals in race condition. Head on over to AXC Sim using the link in the description below. If you find this video useful then do please like, subscribe and leave any thoughts or questions in the comments below, I will answer them. And if you do head over to buy one of these Logitech G923s or anything else for sim racing, check the description for links and discounts for tons of sim racing brands. And thank you very much for doing so. Thanks to all my YouTube members also, almost enough to start a party now. First up is the short version. Should the G93 be the one you pick? So the answer to that depends mainly on who you are. So if you're under 18, you'll probably readily adapt to the low levels of feedback and realizing that the G93 gives you. For you, it's, it's a fair choice for a first wheel. But if you're over 18, you may have less free time, a bigger budget, and just be generally hard to please. And if that sounds like you, then you should probably skip this and go straight onto a mid-tier setup, particularly if you know you're going to be committed to joining sim racing, you're best off skipping this and starting there instead. The experience will be far more realistic and absorbing, and the older you are, the more that advice applies. Is the force feedback realistic? Not very. It's good enough to get a basic idea of force feedback, particularly if it's your first force feedback wheel. You're still going to have fun with it, but if you want a genuine, realistic experience, this can't give it to you. You're going to have to spend a bit more, unfortunately. Will it just work with all my racing games and sims? Yeah, I mean, if this doesn't work, then nothing will. This is one of the most popular and well-supported wheel lines around. Few things will be easier to just get up and running with than this. Is it durable? Absolutely. This is a wheel that has no problem being put away and set up thousands of times. You won't have to baby this like you would with some more expensive wheel setups. Is it noisy? Despite the weak force feedback, this is actually one of the louder wheels around. It's going to clunk and clack quite a bit. So you'll probably want to use it away from where other people are just trying to get some peace and quiet. Can you use it on a desk? Definitely. There's probably no better choice if you're going to be using it on a desk. Both the wheel and pedals are well designed to do it. Is it worth a price? Never pay full RRP for the G923. It ain't worth that. But it's often on sale for 20-25% off. That's a bit more like it. The G923 ain't really that different from the G920 or G29 that came before it and you can still buy them for brand new, much cheaper than this. And cheaper still if you get them second hand, of which there's no shortage and you'll have no trouble selling yours when it comes time to sell. The G923 seen here costs 300 quid. The RRP for it is 380 quid and as I said in a summary just now, never ever pay that. That's way too much for what this is. 300 quid is just about acceptable. In the box you'll find a steering wheel base complete with integrated desk clamps and pedals with integrated carpet gripper. There's everything you need to go racing and it's well suited to all setup styles, no matter how you're planning to use it, be it on a desk or with a dedicated racing seat or stand. Every mainstream racing seat or wheel stand will accept the Logitech G93, so you can pick near enough any contraption you like the look of from a reputable brand to pair it with it and be confident it's going to work. For example, the one seen here is the Play Seat Challenge and it partners perfectly, but you're spoiled for choice. In the nicest possible way, the G923 is not really strong enough to cause problems for any of the racing seats and stands out there. 
The cables for the pedal and power adapter hook into the wheelbase via this secret compartment underneath, which hides the cable ends out of harm's way and keeps them securely connected. Very good to know if you're always moving it or folding your racing seat away. There's a warning sticker here which I've assumed means don't play racing games online if you're a big baby and you can't handle getting beat. So what's the build quality like on a G923? Does it feel cheap and nasty or pretty well made? Well, there's a lot of plastic on show obviously, but there's a lot of metal as well. And the plastic that is here is what I would call premium plastic. You know, it's surprisingly refined. What they've done here is basically make art out of beans on toast. They've taken cheap materials and made something that actually seems pretty refined. The wheel rim itself is metal at its centre with proper leather wrapping around the grip and a lovely blue metal centre stripe sitting at the top. The buttons started around the wheel are of great quality, they're all quiet and well cushioned without any of that hard plastic pop you sometimes find on accessories. The D-pad and action buttons feel really slick to use when you're flying through the menus and make very little noise doing it. That all helps to make the G923 seem like it takes some pride in itself. The shifter paddles are made of steel and black in colour, they just do their job without attracting any attention to themselves. They quietly click when pulled, but don't have any magnetic pop feel to them at all, just a simple spring loaded pull. But even so, they feel firm enough to feel like they could be realistic shifter paddles. The wheel features a smooth rotary dial which can be twiddled to adjust various things just to add a dash of feeling like you know what you're doing just before you stack it on the next corner. All the important load bearing bits on the pedal unit are metal but they're enshrouded in a large tough plastic shell protecting the innards from whatever's happening down at floor level and giving your heels somewhere to sit. There's pretty much no such thing as a Logitech pedal snapping or breaking due to too much force or none that I've heard of anyway. Not that you'll need to press that hard though, the throttle and clutch are lightweight, but the brake pedal has a pretty decent resistance to it that is progressive, making it fine for casual games, but certainly usable for the more serious ones as well. In terms of driving feel, the G923 can give you a limited range of cues and sensations that can help you work out what the car's doing underneath you, but they won't be particularly strong or sophisticated. Whereas the stronger mid-range force feedback wheels like the CSL DD have a much more natural and lifelike feeling, it will take a little bit of time to become accustomed to the limited effects and power of the G923, but you can still do so, and you can still drive well with this once you get to know it. Especially if you're trading in a controller in exchange for one of these, and once you get past that initial acclimatization, you'll start leaving your old lap times in the dust. Driving with a wheel is to racing games what playing with a mouse is to first person shooters. It's the right tool for the job. Even though it has only a small amount of force feedback power and what does come at you is pretty basic, you can still tune into what it does give you and start building your skills. Whilst there's enough force there to give you a feeling of driving, there's not enough there to generate a lot of excitement or feeling of danger. You'll have to spend a fair bit more to get that. The G923 is to force feedback, and what watching a film on your phone sitting on a park bench is to cinema. You've watched the film, sure, you just can't say that it was an immersive experience. As the G923 is gear driven inside, you will feel a subtle meshing of gears and cogs as you turn the wheel. This means it's not quite dead smooth like a real car is, and as a result of this mechanism, the G923 is also on the noisy side, which is really important if you've got to consider other people around you. When there's a shock through the chassis of your virtual race car, such as driving over a sausage curb, the tremor that's sent through the wheel creates a clack or clunk noise. If you're a family member sitting in the next room and you can't tell whether it's a toddler bashing some plastic blocks together or just you with your noisy force feedback wheel, that can get understandably annoying. On the side of a wheel casing you'll see the word true force, and that is something new that the G923 has that the G920, G29 and prior wheels didn't have. What is it? Well basically it's a vibration effect through the wheel rim, so alongside the typical force feedback effects that produce resistance that try to fight your movements, true force also produces vibration effects that buzz through the wheel and can be felt through the palms of your hands, a bit like the vibration in a game controller. 
Only a handful of racing titles fully support it on consoles, whereas PC can utilise it in everything as it just feeds off the audio input. The effect is mainly useful for creating engine vibrations that you can feel through the steering wheel, and although it's not a strong sensation, it is strong enough to notice it and kind of miss it when it's turned off. It's something that I'd rather have than not. Ambient vibration effects like this do add to the immersive feeling that draws you into racing games. However, this series of Logitech wheels is already noisy, True Force can sometimes kick things into overdrive. Just listen to the noise it makes as I spin out in game and True Force goes nuts. The pedals are reasonably good. The all important brake pedal has a fair amount of resistance and it's nice and progressive. It's also heavy enough to be very much viable for sim racing where delicate braking is super important. I actually find it easier to brake accurately with this than I did with the standard Fanatec CSL pedals or Moza R5 bundled pedals, so they've done a decent job here. The clutch and throttle are pretty lightweight, the clutch lacks any kind of progressive pop though, so it's not very realistic. However, pedal mods are bound in their hundreds for this Logitech wheel lineage, so if you don't like the feel of anything, there's going to be a spring, a buffer, a mod that will make it right for you. Some people have taken their Logitech pedals to new heights by adding some simple accessories. As standard, you can mount the pedal faces slightly left or right of their standard position. There are three screw holes to let you adjust it so that if the factory setup isn't to your liking, you can change it. So where does the G923 sit on the scale of realism? You know, is it solid, quality, lifelike force feedback? It's 300 quid after all, that's a lot of money. Well, I'll be honest with you, not really. On a scale of one being uh, a, a kid's toy and 10 being a serious tool, this is about a three. You get a small help and a force feedback to work with which can feel fairly strong if perhaps you're on the younger side or you've skipped your Weetabix that morning, but most adults will find the amount of force feedback to be fairly unremarkable. I know I'm generalising here, but I would say that the older you are, the less satisfied you're going to be with the G923 for less time before you inevitably upgrade. It's not powerful or agile enough to really give you a true, realistic sense of the cars you're driving, and it is still firmly entry level in the world of force feedback wheels. It's the Toyota Yaris of racing wheels. It drives fine, sells in big numbers, just don't expect it to be a thrill ride, and instead love it for what it is. What the G923 is, just like the G920, G29, G27 and G25 before it, is the first stage rocket that helps lift newcomers into the stratosphere of sim racing, where things start getting really specialised, expensive, but exhilarating. So let's imagine you pick the Logitech G923 as your first force feedback wheel for getting into sim racing, you know, your starter kit. How long is it going to be realistically before you start wanting to upgrade to a mid-tier setup like a Fanatec CSL DD or Moza R5? Well, that really does depend on you, but I have heard of people taking as little as a month to make that jump. If you get bitten hard by the sim racing bug, it's addictive, and you may be on this for less time than you think. Budget permitting, of course. If you do a grade from this and you come to sell your G923, you can expect to recoup maybe about a half to two thirds of your original purchase price, at least based on sold listings on eBay. If a budget isn't there to upgrade to mid-tier setup, then there are things you can do to upgrade the G923. There's not so much you can do to the innards of the wheelbase, which is probably the biggest weakness of a G923, but it's not completely helpless. I've heard of people modifying the config files that make it feel a lot stronger, and of course you can replace the wheel rim with something custom made from the community. The point I'm trying to make here is that the Logitech wheel, this series has been around for so long and is so popular, millions and millions of people use this wheel or have used it and so there's been plenty of time for the moss to grow around that particular rock if you know what I'm saying. People know these wheels inside out. So let's put some context to this. If the G923 is supposedly an entry level wheel, then what do the mid tier and upper tier wheels actually look like? What's the difference? Well I'll show you exactly what I mean. Here's the G923 in a high force feedback scenario, aka a spin out and a crash. And here's a mid tier Fanatec CSL DD in a high force feedback scenario. And here's an upper tier Fanatec DD1 in a high force feedback scenario. The difference in power, response and viciousness is plain to see and just staggering. 
If the G93 is to be where you start, then enjoy it. It's plenty good enough to start off with, just know that you are in for a mega treat if and when you upgrade. It's a ton more fun with the mid-range wheels such as the Fanatec CSL DD or Moza R5 or above, that's for sure. I was so blown away with how awesome sim racing felt after upgrading to a mid-tier setup from a Logitech wheel, but it basically spawned the very creation of this channel, as I felt like I needed to tell people immediately. But drive whatever you can buy, and don't worry about it too much for now. As a sim racing starter kit, the G923 is just there to help you find out if racing is your thing, and it does this well enough. The proof's in the pudding of just how many people started with this force feedback family tree, and there are tons of people that got seriously good at it whilst they were here. If you end up loving sim racing, then it's done the job of introducing you, and you'll look great eventually, but if you don't, you'll just be glad that you didn't overcommit. And that's it, this concludes my overview of the G923. If you have one, or have had one in the past, let people know in the comments what you think of it, good or bad, and feel free to ask questions or just leave feedback in the comments. Remember to check out AXC Sims range of Logitech upgrades and spares, check the links in the description, and thanks to those who do so, throw a like and a subscribe in there as well if you'd love to help me out. Cheers again!